secondary taxes. We have all seen newspaper headlines claiming that only 57% of UK citizens pay taxes. In the US, it's as low as 39%. Now, does this mean that 43% of UK citizens and 61% of the US citizens pay no taxes at all? <laughs> of course not. For these are highly misleading statistics. Everybody pays taxes, but secondary taxes. Primary taxes are those paid directly to the government on income and assets. Secondary taxes are those paid on goods and services, but which are taken out as primary taxes further downstream. In the US, it is estimated that the bottom 20% of the population, although supplying a meager 2% of the total tax take, will pay over 20% of their low incomes in secondary taxation. Straightforward examples of secondary taxes are value-added tax in the UK, 20% on purchase price. Or tax paid on fuel uh, at service stations, uh, that's 52.95 pence per litre in the UK, around 50% of the price of refuelling. But there are more subtle examples. Every time an individual makes a purchase, necessarily with money on which primary tax has already been paid, part of that payment will eventually end up in the government's coffers. Companies must pay primary taxes on their profits, shareholders on their dividends, and workers on their wages. All this primary tax take comes originally from the initial purchases of goods and services at the source of the revenue streams. In the first budget of Liz Truss's UK government, uh, it included the removal of the cap on bankers' bonuses. Uh, there was a huge public outcry, outcry, even though primary taxes on the extra will be taken off at the highest rate government will gain. Of course, these bonuses and subsequent taxes ultimately come from bank customers as higher prices and secondary taxation. All hikes in salaries and bonuses will be extracted from the customer base. Surprisingly, apart from the management, uh, there is no public outcry when trades unions achieve large wage increases for their members. Such increases cause inflationary pressure as they will ultimately be paid for in the private sector by demanding extra prices from customers and in the public sector by draining the tax base, uh, requiring yet further tax demands. So the rich get rich and the poor get poorer. Yes, but that's only part of the picture. A more accurate statement would be the powerful stay ahead of inflation, the powerless fall behind. Achieving wage increases above inflation is all about power. The threat of strike action can only be used effectively by the powerful, namely those who have a stranglehold on the bottleneck of goods and services. As Baudelaire said, one is punished for being weak, not for being cruel. The weak in society are disproportionately and negatively affected by sal salary hikes won by powerful unions, who, by implication, are the enemies of the powerless, namely the poor and the elderly in society, who always lose out. Socialism was never about caring for the poor and the downtrodden, but furthering the interests of powerful workforces. To repeat, it's all about power. For example, train drivers, civil servants, doctors, lawyers and other groups use control of a bottleneck to threaten disruption of the economy. The more they squeeze out of the system, the more yet again the bottom of the pile has to pay. Can technology help in reducing the cost? Yes, of course. Uh, driverless trains will mean no drivers and no driver's wages. No surprise then that the UK Labour Party, which
which is in the pocket of large trade unions, say that when elected, they will renationalize the railways. That will stop any talk of driverless trains. No doubt, they would also stop the replacement of civil servants and many other now powerful bureaucratic groups with artificial intelligence systems. Like King Canute, they will try to hold back the tide, but like him, they will ultimately fail. Think back to the, how the then powerful print unions used blackmail to, uh, of newspaper owners into paying excessive wages. But technology eventually brushed them aside. General practitioners and solicitors, each with their own pseudo unions, both now earning a good living from plucking low hanging fruit, will also find themselves powerless against the grasping hands of artificial intelligence. As the old Chinese curse would have it, may you live in interesting times. <laughs> the collapse of the status quo will inevitably mean upheaval and social unrest. Now, my career advice to the young from over 20 years ago still remains true. If you can't be a knowledge worker, be a policeman. Thank you.